As this list is about to show you, characters have died, secrets have been revealed, and tough heart-to-heart -heart talks have been had, all when they were least expected. So cue the uncontrollable tears and ugly crying, because I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 heartbreaking movie moments that came out of nowhere. Number 10, Karen opens the Joni Mitchell CD, Love Actually. Generally speaking, whatever adversity the characters in a Christmas movie go through, there's usually a heartwarming and uplifting ending. It is Christmas after all. However, there are exceptions to the rule. The majority of Love Actually's intertwining stories have this kind of happy conclusion, but not all of them. Chiwetel Ejiofor's Peter has his wife and best friend fall in love behind his back, while Emma Thompson's Karen finds out that her husband played by Alan Rickman, has been cheating on her. It is the latter that is the worst of these. As the movie shows the exact moment, she finds out the truth. Earlier, when Karen finds the expensive gold necklace Harry bought in his pocket, she naturally believes it's her Christmas present. When the big day comes and she opens her gift though, he has given her a Joni Mitchell CD. The incredibly expensive necklace obviously went to somebody else. As heartbreaking as that moment was, it's arguably outdone when Karen confronts her husband streaming down her face, she essentially tells him she is going to carry on for the kids' sakes, even knowing that her life would be a little bit worse, before greeting her children with the biggest smile after their nativity play. It's a happy facade, and Emma Thompson's performance is so excellent that you can still see the pain hiding behind it. Number 9. Rally Commits Suicide Would You Rather as something of a stark contrast to Love Actually, Would You Rather is a grim movie from start to finish. Shepard Lambrick, a man with too much money and absolutely no regard for the lives of others, brings eight strangers to his house for a demented game of Would You Rather. Each player naturally had their own reasons for playing, even after the truly horrific nature of the game was established. One of the opening tasks, for example, saw a recovering alcoholic drink a bottle of scotch for $50,000. Such was the kind of money at stake. Britain Snow's Iris played the game to earn money for her brother, Raleigh. More specifically, she played to earn money to cover his leukemia treatment, and if she won, Lambrick promised to use his influence to find a bone marrow donor. In spite of having to eat meat as a vegetarian, being submerged underwater for two minutes while the players around her died, Iris persevered with her brother in mind and ultimately won the game. Hooray! After shooting Lucas dead, she was the only survivor. However, when Iris got home at the end of the movie, the weight of her brother's condition and the feeling of being a burden had gotten the better of him. He had committed suicide. Not only had Iris lost her brother, she had gone through an excruciatingly painful experience in which she had to kill people and was essentially tortured all for nothing. Yikes. Number 8. Ray's Death, The Princess and the Frog the Princess and the Frog is one of the finest movies in Disney animation's long history, with the music, the setting, and the characters all being outstanding, the latter even down to the tiniest Firefly. From the moment he enters the film, Ray is an utter joy. Ray's a welcoming, happy bug who just has a knack for putting smiles on faces. Even when Anika Noni Rose's Tiana snaps at him and tells him his beloved Evangeline is a star a million miles away and not a Firefly for him to fall in love with, he forgives her instantly instantly despite being hurt. It's easy to see then why his death was so damn upsetting. Firstly, Ray didn't deserve to die. He just wanted Tiana and Bruno Campus's Naveen to be happy together, even though he'd only known them for a short time, and trying to help them got him killed. Secondly, this is a Disney film, the good guys aren't supposed to die. It's impossible not to well up when Ray finally succumbs to injury thanks to Keith David's Dr. Facilier, but when he is reincarnated as a star and gets to spend eternity next to his beloved Evangeline. There's no stopping those tears, baby. What do you think's the saddest animation moment of all time? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 7, Sean and Philip's Heart to Heart, Sean of the Dead. Edgar Wright's Cornetto trilogy, made up of Sean of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End, earned its popularity for its comedy and wacky off-the-wall premises such as zombies, murderous cults trying to win a village contest, and aliens taking over the world. However, all three movies are peppered with emotional moments 
moments too. One of the best being a conversation between Simon Pegg Sean and Bill Nye's Philip in Shaun of the Dead, both heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. Throughout the film, Sean moans about his mum's partner Philip a lot. He's never liked him, and he's constantly telling people that he is not his actual dad. After Philip gets bitten and Sean and co are heading to the Winchester for safety, to the backdrop of Ed trying his best to hit as many zombies with the car as possible, Philip has a heart-to-heart -heart with his stepson. It's genuinely emotional as he tells Sean that he has always loved him and only ever wanted what was best for him, which was to grow up strong with someone to look up to. Brings a tear to your eye, man. He quietly passes away as Sean cries for both Philip and the relationship they could have had, before soon attacking the rest of the people in the car as the normality of the film's tone is quickly restored. Number 6. Hoagie Has Cancer – Tag On the face of it, Tag is initially a movie about a group of grown men who get together every year to play a month-long game of Tag. And with the likes of Ed Helms, Jake Johnson and Hannibal Burris playing leading roles, it lives up to the comedic expectations. The underlying story, however, is not so simple. While Hoagie, played by Helms, claimed that Jeremy Renner's Jerry was planning on retiring from the game due to his upcoming wedding without ever being tagged, he recruits his friends to ensure Jerry loses his streak. Towards the end of the film, though, Hoagie is forced into hospital and confirms that he actually has a tumour on his liver and likely won't live long enough to play the game again next year. This is why he was so desperate to get everyone back together. It's a dark turn in a movie that, until then, showed little signs of being anything other than a fun comedy. What also made the moment even worse is that it was easy to assume it was just a trick to tag Jerry. Jake Johnson's Randy couldn't get past that feeling. While Jerry and his fiance had already created an elaborate pregnancy and miscarriage ruse to get out of being tagged. Pretty extreme stuff. But no, this was the real deal. Number 5. Bing Bong Sacrifices Himself Inside Out Disney Pixar has, for almost 30 years, perfected a balance between family-friendly storytelling and the kind of emotional moments that could genuinely traumatize you. Neither the death of Arlo's father in The Good Dinosaur, Wally finally recognizing Eve, nor the opening minutes of Up would be out of place on this list. However, it's hard to look past one moment in particular from Inside Out. Oh, you know the one. The entire premise deals with different emotions and how it's okay to feel different things. But who could have seen something quite so soul-destroying coming? As Amy Poehler's joy and Phyllis Smith's sadness were running around Riley's mind, trying to get back to HQ with her core memories, they ran into Richard Kind's Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend from when she was a kid. Of course, Bing Bong loved Riley and wanted what was best for her, which in one instance in the movie meant his own sacrifice. Bing Bong and Joy were stuck where memories eventually fade, and their song-powered rocket ship wasn't powerful enough to carry them both to safety. As they began to ascend out of the chasm, unbeknownst to Joy, Bing Bong jumped off to allow her to survive on her own. He knew he would be forgotten, but he made the sacrifice so that Joy could save Riley. Who knew that seeing an imaginary friend fade away into a forgotten memory could be so damn devastating? Number 4. The Death of Gore's Daughter – Thor Love and Thunder Taika Waititi introduced himself to the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the universally beloved Thor Ragnarok. And though there were moments of quiet emotion and poignancy, Ragnarok was a comedy movie through and through. With Waititi's return for Thor Love and Thunder, the silliness factor was turned up more than a few notches, unfortunately to the movie's detriment. However, right out of the gate was a moment of pure sadness that brought forth floods of tears before the God of Thunder even showed his face. The main villain of the film was Gore the God Butcher played by Christian Bale, called so because he swore to kill every living god. This was because of how he was treated by the gods he found after his daughter had passed away. When Gore prayed for their help, but was merely laughed at and mocked, the scene itself was truly heart-wrenching, as Gore and his daughter struggled through the desert with no shelter from the blistering heat of the sun. Unable to continue, the poor girl went to sleep curled up with her father and never woke up. The scene immediately cut to Gore hugging her grave in a moment that no one could could have been ready for, even those who knew of the character's origins from the comics. Number 3. Caretaker's Murder – The Longest Yard Recent years have seen Adam Sandler show off his acting chops with the likes of Hustle and Uncut Gems, in a way far removed from his typical comedic styling. However, this was something he already did way back in 2005 with The Longest Yard, in which he played Paul Crew, an incarcerated former NFL quarterback forced to put together a team of convicts to play the prison guards in a pre-season warm-up game. It's a fun movie, and Sandler puts in a strong performance, but undoubtedly the heart and soul of both the film and 
and the team crew put together was Chris Rock's caretaker. No one particularly liked poor crew, thanks to his history of cheating in the NFL, and so the likability factor came solely down to caretaker. He was universally loved, which is why his death was such a hard pill to swallow. It was crew himself who was targeted by an inmate spy of the wardens, but it was caretaker who wandered into the wrong cell at the wrong time and was killed by a radio rigged with explosives. Not only did his murder come out of nowhere, it couldn't have happened to someone less deserving. Number 2. Dominic's Body is Found – The Banshees of Inner Sharon The Banshees of Inner Sharon was one of the most well-received movies of 2022, and rightly received four Oscar nominations in the acting categories. Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson and Kerry Condon were all outstanding for Martin McDonough, but it was Barry Keoghan who gave arguably the best performance of his entire career. Even in a film as bleak as this one, his Dominic was a truly tragic character. He was beaten by his father, he was let down by Patrick, the closest thing he had to a strong male role model, and he was knocked back by Siobhan when he professed his love for her. This scene itself was tough to watch. Though she let him down as gently as she could, Dominic saw his dreams dashed, and this was the last that was seen of him on screen alive. All that was mentioned of him after was in Patrick's letter to his sister, in which he says they found the young man's body in the lake. It is a big old gut punch, only made worse by the realization that Patrick's assumption that he slipped and fell isn't as likely as him jumping in the fallout of his talk with Siobhan. Number 1. Jojo Discovers His Mother, Jojo Rabbit While he may be widely regarded for his eccentric style and unique, often silly humor, Taika Waititi manages to appear on this list yet again. This time it's not a villain swearing revenge on the gods of the world, but instead a small boy in Nazi Germany. If you look at Jojo Rabbit as a comedy about Jojo himself, a member of the Hitler Youth whose imaginary friend is Adolf Hitler, played by Waititi, it's bordering on ridiculous, really. However, if you look at it as a story about a German German woman Scarlett Johansson's Rosie Betzler, risking her life to give a Jewish girl sanctuary in Nazi Germany, it becomes a lot more serious. There is a good balance between these two tones throughout, but that doesn't stop one of the most harrowing images in recent cinematic memory from coming completely out of the blue. As Jojo is innocently walking through the town square, distracted by a butterfly, he suddenly and without any warning whatsoever comes across his mother hanging. The image of her shoes dangling at his head height, with her child tying her laces as she had shown him, and grasping at his mother's legs, is seared into the mind of anyone who has seen it. It was some properly devastating stuff this, and I am still not over it.